<laughs> so, this video is, we reckon now, about a year since uh, the last update that I gave you on this um, renovation. If not a bit more. If not a bit more. Possibly a bit more. Um, and since then, there have been a few changes made to the vehicle. <laughs> As you can see, don't have an engine, don't have a V8 anymore. The V8's gone to its new home. It's uh, now living in a snatch Land Rover. Um, gearbox is gone, obviously. Transfer box is gone. Um, obviously, the body's been completely stripped off. Pretty much, the only thing that's on there left on there at the moment is the rear um, cab box. I don't know what you call that, the rear box, um, and the bulkhead has been replaced by this rather nice galvanised TD5 unit. So it's not brand new, but it's um, it's one of the later TD5 ones that's been repaired and galvanised, so it's quite nice. Um, so the plan now really is to get this here lump installed, but not immediately, but so this eventually this is the engine that's going to end up in it. So for those of you who don't know, that's a OM606 Mercedes. 3 litre, 24 valve, straight 6, turbo diesel. Um, and I think probably for about 170 horsepower standard, um, but they will run up to, quite reliably, up to about 500. Um, they're used by drift teams, um, race, race teams, diesel racing. So a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing. So that's the engine, and the plan to use, for the transmission is to use the original Mercedes uh, five-speed auto, which I'll be you controlling with a, a custom controller, which I'll be going into more detail in further episodes. Um, and then that will be connected to the Land Rover transfer box, which I haven't got yet, but it'll be in there somewhere. And then it will send drive to the standard Land Rover axles, which may have a few internal upgrades in time but for the moment it's they're just standard Salisbury and Rover axles. So today's jobs, <coughs> um, I mean obviously one of the first things I want to do is get that engine installed. Um, I'm sort of, I'm still not entirely sure about how it's going to be mounted and whether the transfer box is going to be divorced, meaning it's um, separated from this the back of the gearbox by a, by a prop shaft or whether I'm going to go with a, a mated, proper mated setup with a, an adapter plate. So I'm talking to a couple of people about that at the moment, but we'll figure that out. But for now, there's a few other jobs, obviously, that Land Rover needs doing on it. So one of them is new front shocks and springs. Um, it's, currently, it's currently running Britpart Yellow and Cellular Dynamic, I think they're called. Um, and they're not too bad, but I've always, I wanted to change them out so that the front suspension matches the, the rear in terms of um, weight uh, poundage and the shocks are really not, not up to 130 so I've got some Terra Firma big bore expedition shocks for the front which should provide a nice amount of damping and then I've got these lovely um, Bearmac I think they're BA Two one oh two springs, and they're actually heavy duty rear springs for a 90, so um, quite high poundage and nice thick uh, coils. So, um, when when the 606 is in, and the I want to have a, a winch bumper on the front as well, uh, it should support that, that weight nicely without, without sagging too much. So, that's the plan. <laughs> So what we're doing here is, this is a galvanised shock turret, yeah. which means that it'll last for a long time when things get salty. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to uh, change, change out the shock, the springs today, and the shocks. And I've also got spin around. I've got some galvanised spring seats. And some galvanised lizard seats. Spring retaining plates or shock retaining plates. So.
old tip, <laughs> proper slip, it's always very important on your bolts. Because you know, five years down the road, when you come to redo it, you'll be really glad you did this. There we go, we're putting the new spring seats in. At this point, what you want to do is have your assistant do the bolts up for you, so I'll see you going up and have a seat. First one looks proper busted. Busted? So this steel bulkhead um, on Land Rover is extremely prone to rusting. Just you'll, here, isn't it? You'll find them here on the corners. And then when we when we took off the uh, windscreen on the original one, all of the top of the bulkhead along here is all rusted away. The footwells rust on them, pillars rust on them, basically just low shit. Um, so galvanised ones, it's a hot dip galvanised process. So any rubbish and nastiness is stripped off of it. And I think it's an acid dip or something. Um, and then it's dipped in hot zinc, which coat, coats it completely and it's like a sacrificial layer. Um, basically, it should last 50 years, really. And how old is it originally, the uh, bulkhead? 30 years, but it's pretty completely rotten. Uh, with this one, it's also going to get painted as well, so it's mm. going to be a duplex coating. And it's also going to be, all the cavities are going to be filled with um, like a wax oil type substance as well. Triple protection. Cavities. Nice. Cavities. So, um, we fitted the springs and shock absorbers, as you can see. Took a little bit longer than we expected, but they're in now. Um, looking very nice. So yeah, we've got the galvanized spring seats. Bearmac BA2102 heavy duty plus 50 mil springs. Very, very stiff. Um, and then we've got the Terra Firma. Uh, big bore expedition shocks in there as well. And it's all bolted up nicely with the galvanized shock turrets. So, the engine. Um, so you can see how it's sat in here at the moment. Um, fairly close to the front cross member, that's just where we've got it sat at the moment. Um, got the gearbox attached as well. And sat on a ratchet strap just to hold it up at the back. Um, and you can see, between the output flange of the gearbox and that body cross member, you've got about 50 centimeters, um, which, including a space for a transfer box and a linking adapter, isn't actually very much. So it's a bit tighter than I was hoping it was, basically. Um, and that's with the engine mounted fairly close to the front, so there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a huge amount of clearance there between your radiator and the front pulleys and stuff. No, no room for a fan, certainly. Which isn't ideal. So, started to look at um, close mating the transfer box to the gearbox, which would mean using a different type of Mercedes gearbox, the 4x4 version, which sort of stops about there, and it has a, a bolted um, mating face, so you can flush mount it against the transfer box but that would require quite a lot of machining and engineering time so I'll have to think about that. 
we'll see. Um, other things to note, the alternator sits pretty much where the power steering box is, that's where it wants to be, um, so otherwise the engine's going to be too far over to the right hand side. So we're going to have to relocate that and there's a chap called Gaz, um, Gaz Fab company that will supply a bracket to relocate this whole carrier up to this area here so it's well out of the way. So that's the plan for that. And then turbo wise, that's the standard um, triple K little tiny turbo um, and it's got an unusual Mercedes sort of triple bolt flange there as well which is sort of proprietary to Mercedes and not really used by anything else. Um, I am planning to upgrade that so I've got that, I've actually got the turbo I'm going to use for that already because I always buy the shiny things first. Um, but in terms of space there's quite a lot of space here for, for big turbos and manifolds and adapters things so not too bad. Other than that it fits pretty well and so this is the whole, this whole, the whole engine is going to be further that way eventually when, there's, when the alternator has been relocated so there will be more, more clearance here. Um, brackets, not too bad. Engine mounts, lots of lots of holes to pick up on the block. Uh, there'll be a plate going across there, um, and then a mount plate onto the onto the onto the rubber, and then it'll just be braced simply up against that plate, both sides. See what we can do with fabrication. Not too bad. So something else we're working on at the moment um, is repairing the original doors of the 130. So we've got this new section welded in because as everybody knows the bottom corners of Defender doors always rust. So that's welded in. Last little bit to do on it is this section here. So just to drop, make a little folded section, weld it onto that and that'll be the frame pretty much done. And then tomorrow get some paint and red oxide it all, prime it all. Um, and then we've got new, new door skins in that box there. And we can put new skins, brand new skins, and then it'll all be lovely, ready to paint and uh, ready to bolt back on.
texture. So as you can see, we've glued the skin with Seekerflex onto the frame. We've got clamps in places where it needs to be pulled up just to keep it tight and make sure the glue is setting in the right place. And you can see, as Alex is beginning to bend the tabs around, we're making sure that it's on a solid base, so it's making sure it's on, over the bench and making sure that the skin is protected by this plastic as well. Um, and that's so you get a nice, a nice tight uh, roll round on the edge, so it's not too, not too big a radius. And hopefully that'll turn out nice and neat. Right, so we've now done most of the, well, all of the outside edge of the store. That looks nice. Um, so now when you're doing the inside bit, little tip here. What Alex has done is he's knocked in the edge about half the way, as far as you can get it with the hammer. Um, and now for this bit to finish it off, because you can't really get the hammer in properly, we've got these big um, half inch steel plate uh, blocks that we've got. I think it came with a press or something, but it's just nice big lumpy bits of steel that you can place in on that, that ridge like so. Um, and then you can, it allows you to press down on the, uh, the skin nicely with your hammer. So it flattens it quite nicely. Definitely.